Welcome back to Message Crawler Video Manual. In this chapter, we're talking about external attachments. So what are external attachments? That's a concept that I came up with to describe when attachments aren't stored inside our SMF files, but stored as a separate files, like you would see with emails and attachments in a standard dat file export. Now, this isn't optimal way of storing attachments because they are meant to be inside their SMF file. However, dealing with large files, pictures, and videos, sometimes it's required to store attachments outside of the RSMF file in order to accommodate processing restrictions or maximum file size that Relativity Processing Engine can handle. Question that a lot of people ask is how big of RSMF files can Relativity Processing Engine handle? And the official answer as of summer 2021 was try to keep them around 200 megabytes, which isn't very realistic given the amount of data people send over chat and text messages. In my experience, I found that I have good results with files up to 600 megabytes and I can get lucky with seven to 800 megabytes and sometimes I can go up to a gigabyte. However, that doesn't happen every day and sometimes a file that's a gigabyte can process one day, but on the next day I could receive error messages. So in order to solve problem of large RSMF files that uh, cannot be generated with message crawler or cannot be processed with relativity, I came up with a concept called external attachment and that's what we are looking at today. All right, so what you see on your screen is message crawler and what we're going to do, import a dat file. I'm going to click on this dat file and we're not gonna mess about with it. We're just going to proceed to export. And one of the options you'll see on the export screen is this option export attachment handling. So we can have our attachments inside the RSMF, always as separate files or as separate RSMF files if attachment is over certain size. Now the way this works is you can specify a specific size. However, uh, the RSMF actually expands a little bit when it's created. So you may want to uh, include numbers slightly lower than what you're thinking. So if you're thinking I want a 500 megabyte of attachments, well, the RSMF file may come up to be like 600. So you want to go 100 megs less. In our case, we're going to say always separate files and we're not going to change anything else. We're just going to run an export and see what we get. So the export's complete. I'm going to move this window here and show you the export folder. So here we have a dat file, text and 001. So what are those things? Well, our RSMF files were exported here and here you see the RSMF file and all the attachments that should be part of this RSMF file. However, they are outside, right? And you see the RSMF files are only five kilobytes. And then same thing as with the next file. We have RSMF, all the attachments and so on. Inside our text, we have four text files and these text files contain the actual body of the RSMF, like the actual extracted text that you would see. Uh, the reason why it's here is if you want to import this data using desktop client, uh, which we'll do at the later part of this video. And then we also have our cross-reference file. Now, uh, opening this in a text editor isn't very convenient, so we're just going to use message crawler to look at our that file. All right, and what you see here is we have a control number, group identifier, a file name, right? So this is how we saw it in the export folder. We have relativity attachment ID, native path, and extracted text. So we have a dat file that points to everything. And what we're gonna need to do is relink our attachments to RSMF after we load them to relativity. So our step one is going to be to take this data take folder one and use relativity processing to ingest it into your workspace. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, and now our folder is processed. So we have our RSMF 15001 and we see the same thing we saw. We have our RSMF and we have our attachments. Now, if they happen to be out of order, it is not a big deal. But what is a big deal are the two fields 
that are incorrectly assigned. One is the group identifier. You see how it is sequential. But this number should be pushed down all the way until we hit next RSMF. And relativity attachment ID should be populated. So what do these fields control? Group identifier controls families. So when we click on the RSMF, we click on our families, you see there are no families available. That's bad. If we look at our viewer, you see our attachments are missing. And the field that's responsible for displaying the attachments is relativity attachment ID. So we're going to need to fix those two fields. And to do that, we are going to use the dat file that was generated automatically. So in order to fix these two fields, we're going to need to use desktop client. Let's go ahead and switch to desktop client. I'm going to go to tools, import, document load file, and we're going to browse to a dat file that was automatically generated for us. Whenever you select external attachments, this cross reference is automatically created. You don't have to check anything else. Let's go to our field map and select link file name. We're going to uh, match this up to file name. We're going to need our group identifier and relativity attach ID. So group identifier attach relativity attachment ID. So double check file name group relativity attachment. This will be overlay only and we are going to use file name as an identifier. Let's do a quick preview errors just to make sure we didn't do anything uh, incorrectly. That's really obvious, which we didn't. So now we're going to click on import and we will get a warning message saying there is an SQL index isn't created. I'm going to have a separate video talking about this specifically and how to avoid this message. And that deals with indexing SQL table, which you have to go on SQL site. It's a fairly um, advanced topic. Uh, but for now, you can just click OK and you should be fine unless you have a ginormous workspace. Uh, if you do, you will need to have this index built. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to let import finish. And there we go. It said it's done. It was super quick. Let's refresh our relativity. And now we'll see that group identifier is the same for all these documents. And relativity attachment ID has been updated as well. So now if we click on our document, we'll see two things. One is our families here have been updated. And now we can see all the families. And we can also go to a viewer and note that our attachments now load. So we were able to export external attachments and uh, load them with processing engine and then overlay our two fields that are required to join families and attachments together and use data this way. One of the advantage of this method is if we had any documents that could benefit from text extraction or OCR, they went through a processing engine and all that information was extracted. Now the other way to load data with external attachment is simply by loading that that file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to close everything and start over. So we're going to say RSMF 15 RDC uh, 15. So this is going to be data that was loaded with a desktop client. Now we're going to say import browse to our dat file and we can map things here we're going to say control number control number group identifier to group identifier uh, if we want to we can do our native file and of course relativity attachment id uh, we can select our extracted text here. Okay, and we're going to say that. So cell extracted text contains that. And link file name, we don't actually need, but we do want to load our native files, of course. So native file path. Let's go ahead and say preview errors no errors and then we can go to import file and again it's going to run 
all records processed. We can switch back here. We're going to need to hit F5 to reload. And now we have our data that was loaded using Relativity Desktop Client. And the advantage here is we don't have to overlay anything. All the fields will load it as they're supposed to. So if we go to our SMF file, everything's going to work. Attachments are here and um, the families and attachments are here. The disadvantage of this method is we did not use relativity processing to get any extracted text or OCR from our attachments. So if we go to our PDF here, you see this has no text. Now the workaround for this is, well, we see that there is actually text that should be. The workaround for this is to image and OCR the attachments if you think you need text for these files. Uh, again, it's a better one inconvenience because that's a separate step you have to do. But those are the two options we have. We can either use relativity processing to ingest data and then overlay additional that file to supplement our group identifier and relativity attachment ID. In that case, we're getting all the extracted text and OCR or we can use desktop client to load everything as is, which makes it easier one step process. But then if you do need uh, OCR and extracted text, you have to run it as a separate step. You need to run, create an image and set, uh, run these through and then run OCR on them. All right, that's it for this chapter of message crawler video manual. I hope you learn how to load data with external attachments, which will allow you to load RSMF files of any size into relativity. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next chapter.